My name is Fabrizio Zangrelli. I'm an alpinist from Boulder, Colorado. I work as a mountain guide and um, I spend a good portion of the year climbing in Nepal, Tibet or Pakistan. Leading a commercial expedition this summer to K2 is, is a massive amount of responsibility. I have 11 people that will be on the mountain. I do consider it a privilege to be asked to lead the expedition. I think it shows that I'm one of the few people that have put in the time on K2. So psyched to be here. So much cooler than Islamabad. On another note, has anybody seen the movie Vertical Limit if you're on the K2 expedition? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of people thought that that wasn't an actual documentary. <laughs> but today we need to pick up the explosives. <laughs> Scully, finally. Psyched. Start checking. Done with organization. Done with packing. Done with everything. Organized chaos. Expedition life. What's ahead? Anywhere from 6 to 16 hours of Jeep riding. Some of the uh, most interesting 4x4 track in the world. It's about a Jeep and a half wide with the uh, serious consequences for falling off. It's only my 10th uh, time doing it, so, and I still hate it. <laughs> scariest part of the whole expedition. This right here is the scariest part of any K2 expedition. Yeah. It's the Jeep ride to Escoli. the easiest trip I've ever had to a Scully. It only took about uh, six hours. The road has improved immensely from 1996 and immensely from uh, 2007 actually. It's kind of amazing. My first expedition to K2 was in 2000 with a couple of good friends of mine and we were on the Abruzzi Ridge. 
uh, this is the year I went to 8,400. The day before uh, I went there, the expedition managed to put seven people on the summit, very successful. In 2005, I came back. Uh, we went back to the Abruzzi to acclimatize, managed to go to the shoulder, uh, and my climbing partner and I went directly up the south face to the right of the magic line. Unfortunately, couldn't continue to the summit. Uh, in 2007, came back, we switched to the Chesin route to acclimatize. Once again, to the shoulder. The idea was uh, my same partner and I uh, finish off the new route on the south face. The weather never came. And I'm back here 2009. By the end of this summer, <laughs> embarrassingly, I would have spent a year of my life on this glacier. Luckily, it's a phenomenally beautiful place. Is there any climbing involved in these expeditions? No. <laughs> in the last decade and a bit, I've gone climbing four days. Four days. Yeah. And 30 expeditions or so. Yeah. It's eh, awesome. <laughs> Gotta love so many times to start off in snowstorms. You really do. David, Galinda, myself are going to go up to Camp 2. And uh, I guess really it's the start of a summer push. Uh, the forecast for the weekend is not bad. And uh, let's see. Uh, in 2007, in a sort of last minute bout of desperation, David, Galinda, and I climbed from base camp to the bottleneck back down in about 36 hours. Another beautiful day climbing K2. Almost over. Huh? Spectacular view from 7,950 meters. <coughs> David and Glinda went for the summit of K2 this morning. I didn't feel good enough. <coughs> you see the gas rooms on the left. Broad Peak, where I was nearly on the summit a few days ago. Painting to the right, Chogalisa. Concordia down below. Master Brum, the cloud right in front of it. South face of K2. And the summit of K2, just in the clouds. Oh well, maybe next week. <laughs> 